Hi there, my name is Alessandro Frasali, and what you're about to watch is my 12-week journey with Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way. It is described as a spiritual path to higher creativity, and I honestly can't remember a three-month period in my life which has been more transformative than the one I've just had. So I really hope you enjoy, and I hope you get something out of it. The Artist's Way is nothing new. In fact, The Artist's Way was published back in 1992, which is the year that I was born. So why do it now? Why not before? Why not later? Well, um, the book has kind of been calling me. Okay, not literally calling me, but get this. When I'm on the couch, I just sit here and sometimes I glance over to the bookshelf. You know when nothing, like you only see one book out of the whole bookshelf? Everything else is blurred. And, and it would, like, it would almost have a voice and it would say, read me, pick me up. And here I am sitting on the couch looking at it going, no, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want to read another self-help book, okay? I don't need that in my life, thank you very much. I don't need more help. It just kept happening, right? And I, I could just kept looking at it. So I picked the book up, put it in my bag so I could shut it up. It didn't have to talk to me anymore. Then I went to a singing lesson that day. On the shelf at my singing teacher's place was another copy of The Artist's Way. Again, read me. I was like, no, shut up, you're in my bag. Anyway, finished the lesson. And that night, me and another filmmaker went to drop off footage to an editor from a job we did on the weekend. And me and this other filmmaker, we hadn't really, we'd met on the day, but um, we hadn't spoken much. And on that night, we started talking. And two hours later, we talked all about creativity, about where spirituality comes into creativity, what it means to be creative and things like that. And he looks at me and he says, you know what, there's a book you should read. And I stopped him because I knew exactly what he was about to say. I went into my bag, I pulled out The Artist Way and I said, is this the book you're about to suggest to me? And he goes, oh, how did you know? There's a point at which you just cannot ignore the signs anymore. When I found out that it was a 12 week course uh, and not just a, a solid book, I thought that I would journal my process, but enough talking about it. Uh, let's get to starting The Artist's Way. Now the book itself says that it is a course in discovering and recovering your creative self. Now this is something that I thought long and hard about. You know, I, I create things all the time. I, I make videos all week, I write all the time. So like, it was a big question as to me, why am I actually doing this? And then I started to read the introduction and I got to a certain bit that I'd like to read to you. By the time I was 30 and abruptly sober, I had an office in the Paramount lot and a whole career out of that kind of creativity. Creativity in spasms. Creative as an act of will and ego. Creative on behalf of others. Creative, yes, but in spurts, like blood from a severed carotid artery. A decade of writing and all I knew was how to make these headlong dashes and hurl myself against all odds at the wall of whatever I was writing. If creativity was spiritual in any sense, it was only in its resemblance to a crucifixion. I fell upon the thorns of prose. I bled. I read that passage and I realized I need to do this course. Not because I'm not creative, but because my creativity has become stifled. When was the last time I just sang for the sake of it, played guitar for the sake of it, uh, wrote stories for the sake of it, as opposed to needing to do it for a specific purpose, for the film, for my vlog, for a client. It's I think I'm making the right decision doing this. So outside the uh, the activities that you do over the course of 12 weeks, there's something called uh, the two basic principles. One, a non-negotiable in this whole thing is that you do morning pages. What that is, is in the morning, you write out three pages of whatever comes to mind. So if nothing uh, comes to mind, you just write out, nothing is coming to my mind. Stream of consciousness, you just get it out. The second principle is to go once a week on something called an artist's date. If you imagine that your creativity is or your artist inside is, is is someone separate to you you need to fuel that creativity fuel that artist within within you so the final thing that Julia Cameron has you doing in this book uh, before you start even week one is a contract I think that bit's quite important to be honest 
Uh, so I'm going to do that now. I, Alessandra Frasali, understand that I am undertaking an intensive, guided encounter with my own creativity. I commit myself to the 12 week duration of the course. I commit to weekly reading, daily morning pages, a weekly artist date, and fulfillment of each week's tasks. I further understand that this course will raise issues and emotions for me to deal with. I commit myself to excellent self-care, adequate sleep, diet, exercise, and pampering for the duration of the course. That's it. All I have to do is sign. I just finished my first morning pages. It feels weird even talking about it because it was probably the most intensely private thing I've ever done. Straight away. I don't even want to think about it, like, it just brings up stuff I've never dealt with. I think it's good. I somewhat feel like I've just muddied the pool, but maybe that's the only way you can get everything clean. Hey. Yo. What's up? Mom, it's day one and I'm already feeling like the most vulnerable I've felt in weeks, years. <laughs> the fuck? <sighs> ah, so today felt so much better and um... I mean, if I'm gonna continue this analogy forward, like yesterday felt like I'd um, muddied the pool, right? Whereas today I just felt like I brought fresh water in to the pool. God, I don't know how long this um, metaphor is gonna go for. Most blocked creatives carry unacknowledged either or reasoning that stands between them and their work. To become unblocked, we must recognize our either or thinking. I can either be romantically happy or an artist. I can either be financially successful or an artist. It is possible, quite possible, to be both an artist and romantically fulfilled. It is quite possible to be an artist and financially su successful. I've been single for like two years and I've been telling myself that I cannot make my feature film while I'm with someone. Even just in these last two days, I've realized that those are the two things I want, you know? I want a, I want a career and I want to, I want to, you know, find someone that I love and that loves me, you know? And it's, it's just great to have someone remind you that you don't have to you don't have to trade one for the other. You can have both. Whew. So today is my artist date day. And what I want to do today is I want to go to a cafe I haven't been in ages to. There's a really cool movie that I want to go to as well. And most of all, I just want to have no worries. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to turn off my phone, turn off everything, and just read my book if I have spare time. you doing check-ins each week. A lot has happened for me this week and a, a lot of it is to do with the, the, the starting of this course. Um, the very first day on that Monday, I found myself feeling very vulnerable because I brought up all this stuff. Let's say you, you, there's some issues that you haven't dealt with for many years and as soon as you bring that up to the surface, you're going to feel, they may not be the, 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 the full effect of them, but you're going to feel somewhat of an aftershock of them because 
you know, you've brought it up. But then I went to the second day and I found myself feeling pure elation um, because, you know, you clear that stuff out. You, you, you start breathing new air into yourself. Uh, the artist date was fantastic. I, I loved just having time for myself. But I feel good. I feel, I feel like I'm on a really good, you know, trajectory. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to going ahead with this course. Which brings us to... So it says that this week addresses self-definition as a major component of creative recovery. You may find yourself drawing new, bound air, uh, new boundaries and staking out new territories as your personal needs, desires and interests announce themselves. The essays and tools are aimed at moving you into your personal identity, a self-defined you. Let's get started. Within just the week and a half of doing the morning pages and last week's exercises in the artist date, there's been a shift already in my creativity in a way, and it's what sort of happened is for some reason I've gotten more focused. I've realized that I've been bringing on extra projects that I haven't needed to. In this last week and a half, I've already stripped away a lot of it and, and, and realized that I have one focus, you know? That's my feature film and um, yeah, I'm really enjoying the focus that The Artist's Way has brought me already. The truth of a life really has little to do with its quality. The quality of life is in proportion, always to the capacity for delight. The capacity for delight is the gift of paying attention. I love that. So it's now been two weeks since I started The Artist's Way and I've had such an amazing time. And I think it would be naive of me to say that it's just a coincidence. Over the next coming weeks, I have no idea where it's gonna lead, but um, that's the exciting thing, you know? So I think you might have noticed that you've clicked on a 12 week journey and kind of just skipped from week two to week 11. My explanation? I don't know. I, um, I feel like a different person. Around week three and four, I received amazing news. Uh, a distribution company wanted to make the film that I am, that I worked on for a year and a half. Now it's in a stage where I just have to wait. It opened my time up so much that I was able for, for the first time in a year and a half just to have all these new creative ideas flow in. I started three projects already this month. After week five, um, the book starts taking a turn into looking at, you know, your finances and how you how you deal with that and I was able to to, to get a new job, to get uh, an old job and to get exactly how much I needed. Then week seven and eight things started changing to lifestyle wise and, and I decided to take a trip up here to, to Byron Bay which is where I am at the moment. Something I don't think I would have done before you know, be spontaneous, just say yes and something I know that this book has helped me with. I know it, I know it. I just, I feel like a different person. I don't think I've ever been this comfortable with who I am, where I am, where I'm going. And like, I honestly don't know what's next. Um, it's been incredible to see these changes. It's been incredible to see uh, me let go, you know? Like, I found myself already not worrying so much about things. And if I said that alone, without all the changes that has happened for me creatively, without all the changes and breakthroughs I've had with my projects, without all of those, if, if, if you had told me that, you know, at the end of this, I would be becoming less worrisome, more carefree, that in itself is worth it. 
that in itself is an amazing achievement for me. Somebody who worries so freaking much. Um, it's, maybe it's just part of the, the place where I am right now. Maybe. Maybe it's that. But um, I don't think so. I don't think it is. I think it's more than that. Question. Do you know how old I'll be by the time I learn to play the piano? Answer. The same age you will be if you don't. I'm too old to be an actor. I'm too old to go to film school. I'm too old to really be a writer. It's another frequent complaint. This is more ego-saving nonsense. The superb novel Jules and Jim was written as a first novel by a man in his 70s. I'm too old is an evasive tactic. It is always used to avoid facing fear. What we are really scared of is that without fame, we won't be loved as artists or as people. When the fame drug hits, go to your easel, your typewriter, your camera, your clay, pick up the tools of your work and begin to just creatively play. Only when we are being joyfully creative can we release the obsession with others and how they are doing. So, you know, I started The Artist's Way with this idea that I would be more creative at the end of it. And I guess I've achieved that. I'm 30 pages into a new feature film script. I've started pre-production on a travel hosting TV show. Um, and I'm just open to more ideas. So, yes, I am more creative. But that's not the major thing I got out of it. That's not the major thing I'm getting out of it. I've realized that I've been creative this whole period. What I've been lacking is a life outside of that. And I am more spontaneous now. I'm seeing my friends now more than ever. I'm doing things just for me. I'm going on artist dates and they're not even artist dates. They're just doing more things that I want and that I enjoy. So you know, I don't feel like that cursed artist, cursed to do so much every day. I'm just loving the process. Yeah. One thing that I have neglected a little bit along this journey is talking about the fact that this book is also somewhat spiritual. And not spiritual in a sense that it's going to get you to be trusting in a religion or trusting in new age phenomena. I... She talks about there being a creative energy outside of yourself. And that might be something that's hard for people to swallow. Um, but if you are a creative, you know that you wake up in that middle of the night and, and that the idea that you had did not come from you. You know that when you sit at a computer for five hours and instantly an idea comes, it didn't necessarily come from you, from that brain of yours. The artist's way is just a way to really just coax out and pull out more from whatever this creative force is outside of us. And I feel more aligned and closer to that than I ever have been as well. I'm not putting pressure on myself to create. I just show up. I just show up each day and I'll let that creative force take care of the quality. I'm just gonna show up and do the work. Show up and just enjoy it. I cannot believe the timing of this. The book took me all the way, all these morning pages, every single morning, and, literally, it's taken me down all the way to one final page. What I conjure now is a mountain of Himalayan proportions, with a path winding upward toward its height. That path, a spiral path, is how I think of the artist's way. As we pursue climbing it, we circle back on the same views, over and over, at slightly different altitudes. I've been here before, we think, hitting a spell of drought. And in a sense, we have been. The road is never straight. Growth is a spiral process, doubling back on itself, reassessing and regrouping. As artists, we, as artists our progress is often dogged by rough terrain and storms. 
a fog may obscure the distance we have covered or the progress we have made toward our goal, while the occasional dazzling vista may grace us, it is really best to proceed a step at a time, focusing on the path beneath our feet as much as the heights still before us. Oh God, I love that journey. God, I love these last 12 weeks. I feel a little bit down now, you know? And part of me wants to keep this book and hold on to it, but another part of me knows that um, I have a friend uh, love and care for and I know that she can benefit from this so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna give it to her yeah <laughs>